This is part 7 of our series on queries in databases in Microsoft Access and in our previous video we looked at how do you do a calculated field in our special three-step program. Um, now we're going to just learn a few more functions that can help us do some more advanced queries or calculated fields for some fancier stuff. So let's go look at some examples. So first of all, so some basic mathematical ones. Maybe you want to round the answer from the calculated field. So you can use the round function. And there's a number at the end of the round function in the brackets, in the parameters. And that comma 2 just means to two decimal places. So if you want to 1, you would make it a 1. If you want to do 0 decimal places, you make it a 0. Now there's also the int function. And that basically converts the number to an integer. It basically cuts off any decimal numbers that are there. So it doesn't round it up or down, it just cuts it off. So let's go try them out. So here we have the calculated query from our previous video. It's the average pay, which is the pay divided by the number of payments, and it's formatted to a currency. So let's go look at what it looks like. So there we can see the payments. And there's a couple of cents over here. So let's just take note of, so there's Sebastian Barry. You see he's got 50 cents, 765. So that should be an easy one to remember. So if I want to round it, I'm going to come here and say, okay, round in front of the formula and then at the end we would say oh, went too far let's say comma and how many decimal places so we want to two decimal places or in this case i want zero decimal places so i'm going to round it so that 0.5 i'm hoping should round up because it's 0.5 so let's run it quickly let's go see our formula so i go to sebastian barry you see it was 765.5 but that five is now rounded up so it's a 0.6 so there we go. So you can see that it did do the round correctly. Now the int just cuts off the decimal. It doesn't round it or anything. So if I just take this away, I don't want round. I want int the formula. And there's no parameter at the end because you just, you just int the formula. Now if I do that one, if I go down to Sebastian Barry, you can see it kept it to 765. It just cut off the 50 cents. So it made it a whole number. It's still displaying the decimal numbers, and that's because of the format is currency. You could always change the decimal numbers if you wanted to to zero if you wanted to do that. Some text functions if you wanted to use them in your calculator fields. So let's take the left, the Beyonce one, to the left, to the left. Um, this one, if you're using the left function, it takes in a piece of text or a text field, and then there's a number at the end which tells you how many characters to the left do you want to copy. So if you want to copy someone's initial, that's obviously their first uh, first letter of their first name. So we want to copy from the left for one character. The right works very similar, except for copies from the back of the text. So it takes in the text and how many characters from the back do you want to copy. In this case, we want to copy the last two characters of the city field. And then there's mid. This one's a little bit more complicated, but let's just recap it. The mid copies from a piece of text, like you can see surname, and then there's two numbers that follow it. The first number, the first parameter, is what position do you want to start copying from? The second number is how many characters do you want to copy? It does not go from character 4 to 2. It says start at character 4 and copy two characters. In other words, we we'll copy character 4 and character 5 in this case of the surname. So just remember that for the mid. And then we have your uppercase and your lowercase, or U case and L case, which will make all the, the text fields capitals or all the text fields small letters. So let's try them out. So let's try the initial one. So I'm going to type in equals left of the first name field and comma one. So I want one character. So I'll type that in. And there you can see the formula. Let's make it a bit bigger. Boom. So the initial is copy from the left for the from the first name for one character so if i run it you can see the first name the first letter is d h d m d h o m d h o so there you go see it's copying the first letter from the left now you can see the cities have a a, t a state at the end it's the last two letters of the city so let's go and make the state field i'm going to change this and delete it boom it's going to be, we're going to copy from the right, from the city field for the last two characters. And if I click away, I must change this EXPR1 to state, because that tells you what state they are. So if I run that, you can see IN, INCO, I think that's California and Texas and North Carolina, I think. 
some you know, some of our American states. So there we go. You can see the different states that are in that field by copying the last two characters or copying from the right. If I just want random numbers, let's just we see there was a code one. So we want to copy from the middle of the surname. And we want to copy from the fourth character for two characters. So that's the code. I'm not going to change the XPR one. Just leave it as that. And so there we go. So if I look at this one, the fourth character, there is only four characters. So I can't copy a fourth and fifth one. So it'll just give you what it can. But if I look at this one, Alex, so Alex is the so A N would be the fourth and the fifth character. No, am I wrong? Uh, actually, X is the is the fourth character, and then the A is the fifth. So there's X A. That's correct, yeah. So that's character four and character five. So if you want to copy, for example, from character four to six, you are actually not going to change that to four comma six because you want to copy from position four, so four five six. That's three characters. You would copy from comma four comma three if you want from four to six. So just remember that the first number is what you're starting at what's the position of the character you're starting the second number is how many characters you are copying and then let's just try one last one with the email let's try the u case with email so you can make it all uppercase there you can see all the emails are in uppercase here we go and if i want to make them lowercase i'll just make it l case and they're all in small letters even if they all got capital letters in them, it'll make them small. So there we go. There's the text fields. Some of the date functions that you could use in your calculated field. So let's do a couple of them. There's the date function. You just leave it date, open bracket, close bracket, and that is today's date. So you can say today's date minus your birth date. If you take two dates and you subtract them, the answer will be a integer value, a number value, and that'll be the number of days that occur between the two dates. So in this case, it's the number of days you've been alive. So you can use that in your calculation. It doesn't give you the age. It just gives you the number of days you've been alive. So that's the date. There's the year function, which if you give it a date is one of the parameters, that will give you the year of that date in some sort of number field. So if you today's date, I'm in the year 2021. So the year of today would be 2021. That would be the result of the year function. There's also a month function, which as you can guess, returns the number of the month. And then there's a day function which returns the day of uh, the, or in this case, of the date. Uh, so if, for example, if we had today's date, I think today is the 20th or the 3rd, today's the 3rd. So it would return a 3 if you set the day of a date. And then lastly, there is a month name function which returns the, the actual name of the month, like January, if you give it a number field. You can't give it a date as a parameter you must give it a number so if i was going to give it today's date i would have to first convert the date using the month function so i get the the number for the month and then use that inside the month name okay so let's go try them out so let's test it out let's test that first one out where we said the date function if i just say is equals date open bracket close bracket that will just give you today's date you can see i'm recording this on the 3rd of april so if i take the date minus their birth date then I would get a number which represents how many days they've been alive now that's not very useful I want the years but how many days are there in a year 365 so you could technically take this calculation remember to use brackets because if we want to first do that part and then divide by 365.25 if you want to be accurate that's how many days there are in a year. I put it in brackets first because if I don't, then it's just going to divide the birth date by the 365. I want to divide the, that whole calculation, divide by 365. This will convert the number of days you've been alive to the number of years you've been alive. And what does that mean? That's your age. But your age isn't 20.36. Blah, blah, blah. We don't like all those decimal numbers. And so we don't, we don't round our birthday. You don't, the moment you've passed your birthday, start round up to the next day. You just cut it off. So we've, learned the int so i'm actually going to use the int here which just cuts off the decimal number of all of this so make it nice and long so there we go and this is going to be called the age field so we just worked out the age there we go we so mr long's 20 yeah sure i am so take the date minus your birth date divided by 365 and then just cut off the decimal and there we have the date or your age there's also the year function so we can say year of the birth date field because that is a date field so year 
So year of birth date, year of birth. So there we can see that function, year of birth. If we run that, so this person, uh, me, Mr. Long, year 2000. So I was, year of birth was the year 2000. Absolutely, that's correct. 1999, 1999. So that just returns the year of that. If I change that, I'm just going to actually take the word year out there. I'll change the year word to month. And then I'll run it. It would give you the month. So it's November. Boom, 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 boom. And if I did the day, it would return the day of your birth date. And if I want to find a month name, so remember there was month name. So month name needs a number. So if I say month name in bracket one, it would just return the name of the month for month one, which is January. But I want the month of your birth date. So I can't give it birth date because that's not a number. So I need to say month of your birth date. So I use the month function to get the number of your month for your birth date and then put that answer in the month name. So, okay, so go do that and then it'll say, oh, you were born in November, you in February, you in April, and there we go. So there's some date functions. Now, some of these functions, just a little tip, you don't have to just use them in queries. You could have also used them in, for example, your validation of your table. So, for example, I'm just going to go to the table here. I'm not going to actually change it, but if you go to your design view, okay, it's being used by another table, that's fine. But uh, let's say you want to put a date of birth uh, a rule validation rule obviously someone can't put their birth date to be after today because obviously that that doesn't that doesn't make sense you can't say your birth date is in the future you haven't we haven't come across any time travels yet but if you if you want to specify it must be before today you can say it must be less than so over there under date you can say less than the date why won't it let me type I just quickly saved everything and closed it. So let's try it again. Validation rule, the date must be less than date, open bracket, close bracket. So you can say it's less the date that, so you must put in a birth date that is before today. You can't put it after today. I'm assuming that if you were born on today, you wouldn't have the, the ability to fill in this form anyway, because you might be a bit young to understand computers, because you're only like a few hours old. So we can say we don't have to include today, because I'm sure they didn't include that date. So there we go. So you can do your functions in here if you want to as well. So those, so it's not just limited to your queries. They work everywhere. So for other videos on the series on queries, go look at our YouTube channel. Go look at our playlist. You'll see all the information you need there. Um, subscribe. Leave a, a like. We would love to hear from you. So leave a comment. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.